This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this lesson, I want you to create and save your own custom workspace. The best way to start is with some pre-existing workspace. If you go to the workspace pop-up above the control panel, you'll see that there's a whole bunch of them up here. So if I was creating a workspace of my own that had to do with interactive features, I may start with one of the interactive workspaces, such as interactive for PDF. But if I wanted to create a print workspace for the way that I worked on print, I probably would start with typography. A lot of what happens in print has to do with typography, so that's a good place to start. To start creating my own custom workspace for print, I'm going to add in the panels that aren't currently open. I'm going to go under my window menu, and maybe I want to include Mini Bridge in my workspace. If I just click on the Mini Bridge tab at the top of the panel, I can drag it anywhere I want, and when I get an insert line, if I let go, it's going to add the mini bridge at exactly that insert line. So if I let go now, it's going to add mini bridge under character styles. Maybe I also want to add a line, because chances are when working on a print document, I'm going to have objects that I want to align to each other. So I can go under my window menu to Object and Layout Align. This happens to open a group of both Align and Pathfinder. If I only wanted to add Align, I would click on that tab and drag it, let's say, under Mini Bridge. But what if I wanted to add the whole group? I could click on this top bar of the group, and why don't I drag it right under Mini Bridge, and when I get an Insert Line, let go. Okay, so that's a good start. But for working on print, there may be some panels that I don't need. So why don't I get rid of them? Like for instance, hyperlink. If I'm working on print, I probably don't need hyperlinks. So let me just click on it and drag it outward from the group panels and just close it by hitting the X. Now I'm ready to save my new workspace. If I go under the Workspace pop-up, I want to go to New Workspace. Let's save it. Being that this is for print, why don't I just call it Jeff's Print? What that's going to do is save or capture all of the panel locations as well as any menu customization I may have done. And I'm going to click OK. And you can see it immediately adds it as the top choice in my workspaces because that's one of my own custom workspaces. But what if I wanted to delete this workspace? How can I do it? If I go under the Workspace pop-up menu, I can actually delete whatever workspace I have chosen. I'm going to hit Delete, and it's going to go immediately back to the default workspace, which is Essentials. Why do you need to save your own custom workspaces? Well, you probably work on different kinds of projects. And if you want to work efficiently on each kind of project, you're probably going to have a workspace for that kind of work. If I'm switching from one kind of a project that I'm doing in the morning to some other kind of project that I'm doing in the afternoon, I can have all the panels that I need instantly just by choosing that workspace. The other thing that's really nice about this is I have all the panels that I need for that kind of work right here. They're open already. After I learn where they are in my workspace, I'm going to be able to find them very easily because they're always in the same place. But also, let's say I'm working in an environment that there's other people who are in my studio and they could use InDesign when I'm not around and do something like this and just totally mess up my entire workspace. And then I come back to work at my computer and it looks like this big mess. Well, I have my own workspace. 
and I could choose that workspace from the workspace pop-up. But what I'm going to do instead is reset digital publishing, which is the workspace that I'm using. And you can see how quickly it gets back to exactly where I want. So using custom workspaces is going to have you working as efficiently as you can because you know where everything is and you don't have to go looking for it or opening it from under the window menu. In the next lesson, we're going to begin talking about setting up layouts.